Hello, you are welcome to Chris Control Automation. In today's video, we are going to look at two motor controls such that when we press on the start button, motor 1 and motor 2 will operate. But when we press on the stop button, motor 1 would go off, but motor 2 will stay on for some time before it also goes off. Let's see. You see that Moto 2 delayed some time before it also went off. So we are going to do the wiring and then I will explain the circuit diagram to you. This is the circuit diagram. We have our stop button, start button, K1, K2, R1, timer 1, on delay timer and then R2. Our stop button, start button, K1, K2, R1, R2. I am going to do the wiring. After the wiring, I will explain the circuit and then we operate the wiring and see how it operates. From line 1, it connects to the input side of stop button 1. From the output side of the stop button, it goes to the input side of the start button 3. From the other side of the start button, it goes to A1 on the K1. We wire the normal open contact on this K1 in power of the start button 33, 34 or 13, 14. It goes to 3 on the start button. This side 13 will connect to terminal 4. On the start button. We tap from the input side of the stop button to one side of the open contact on this K1. These are the load lines. We are not going to use them for the controls. We are going to use this side for the motor power connections. Therefore, in order for us to get more contact, we apply this auxiliary contact on the K1. Here we have more contacts, 53, 54, normally open, 61, 62, normally close, 71, 72, normally close, 83, 84, normally open. So as I said, we connect from the input side of the stop button to one side of the open contact on this K1. The other side of the K1 goes to one side of the closed contact on R2. The other side of the R2 close contact will go to A1 on K2. We wire the open contact on K2 in power with the open contact on K1. We use the 13, 14 or 33, 34. Then we tap from one side of this open contact on the R1 to one side of this closed contact on R2. From the other side of this closed contact on the R2, it goes to one side of this closed contact on K1. From the other side of this closed contact on K1, it goes to one side of this open contact on R1. From the other side of this R1 open contact, it goes to terminal 2 or A1 on T1. Terminal number 2. We tap from this side on the R2 close contact to one side of the open contact on T1. This is the timer contact. 8 and 5 is normal close. 8 and 6 is normal open. So we are using the normal open side. So we connect at terminal 8. This is terminal 8. From the other side of this timer open contact, it goes to 
terminal 13 or A1 on R2. That is terminal number 6. This is terminal number 6. R2, terminal number 13 or A1. That is the coil. Now we are going to connect the neutral cables together. Now we are connecting the power lines to the motor. This is life. This is neutral because the motor is a single phase. It's only life and neutral. Then we connect another life and neutral on contactor 2. Then this is motor 1. We connect the two cables. This is motor 2. We connect these two cables. We fix the auxiliary contact. We are done with the wiring. So I am explaining the circuit diagram and then we operate it. When we press on the start button, current will flow through to energize K1. When K1 energizes, this contact will close to provide a hold on for the K1. This contact will also close to allow current to flow through to energize the K2. This contact will also close to provide a hold on for the K2. This contact on K1 will also close to allow current to flow through to energize the R1. So now we have K1, K2 and R1 which are energized. Okay, so K1 is motor 1 and K2 is motor 2. So it means that motor 1 and motor 2, they will be running. Now, as the R1 is energized, this open contact will close to serve as a hold on for this R1. This contact, okay, on K1 will open. And then as this R1 is energized, this contact is closed. The R2 is not energized. So here we have close, open and close. R1 is closed because this R1 is energized. This K1 is open because this K1 is energized. So now let's see what happens here. When we press on the stop button, K1 will de-energize. When the K1 de-energizes, this contact will open back. But because the K2 is energized and this contact is closed, serving as a hold on, so the K2 will still remain on. This contact on the K1 will open back. But because this R1 is energized, this contact is also closed to serve as a hold on for this R1. Now, as the K1 is de-energized, let's see here, this contact will become closed back because the time the K1 energized, it opened. Now that the K1 is de-energized, it will go back to its closed state. So now we have close, close, close. So therefore, current will flow through to energize the timer. When the timer energizes, it will start counting because it is an on-delay timer. So after the preset time, this contact on the timer will close. Then this R2 will energize. So when the R2 energizes, let's see what happens. The moment this R2 energizes, this contact will open. This contact will also open. This contact will also open. So therefore, when this contact opens, okay, the K2 is going to de-energize. The R1 is also going to de-energize. At the same time, this contact on that R2 will also open. Therefore, the timer is going to de-energize. When the timer de-energizes, this contact on the timer is going to open. So therefore, we have reset the circuit. So it means that when the K1 de-energizes, okay, the K2 will remain on for some time before it goes off through this timer. So now let's see how the circuit operates. I am turning on the main breaker. When I press on the start button, K1 and K2 would energize. Therefore, motor 1 and motor 2 will operate. When I press on the stop button, K1 would immediately go off. Therefore, motor 1 would stop operating. But motor 2 would continue to operate for some time before it goes off. Let's see. So, you see that the timer is not energized. Let's see, it is not energized. The moment I press on the stop button, this K1 will de-energize. Motor 1 will go off. Therefore, the timer would energize and then it will start counting. After it preset time, this K1 will go off and then Motor 2 will also go off. Let's see. See the K1. See the timer and motor one. You see that? You 
So that is how this circuit operates. Press on the start button again. When I press on the stop button, you see that Moto 2 delayed some time before it also went off. So, if this is the first time you're watching this channel, I will urge you that you subscribe to the channel, okay? And then you hit on the bell icon to turn on your notification for you to be able to receive my videos. And also like the video, share the video to your friends, okay? And then put down your comments. Alright? I'll see you in my next tutorials. Thank you.